Good morning. Monday morning, January the 18th, 2021. Hi, I'm Jack Womack. I'm the pastor, senior pastor at Hope Community United Methodist Church. We share these devotionals, my associate and IJT, and so you'll get to see him later this week. Hope Community United Methodist Church is located in Pasadena, Texas at 2838 Lily Street. We uh, started face-to-face -face worship a while back, but I uh, have exciting news. Our attendance this last weekend was uh, the most it's been since we all took time away. And uh, several of our many, really quite a few of our congregation have had at least the first a shot and uh, are working toward the second. I was able to get the first one on Saturday and our associate pastor JT got his on Thursday. So in a very short time we will be uh, getting our second shot as well. The uh, really news that I have is that for wherever you are we're going to be uh, working to have a chili dinner fundraiser. We always do that every year, but usually it's a big event where we all gather at the church and have a silent auction. Well, we just can't do that this year, so it's gonna be curbside service, uh, to go only. And uh, we look forward to that. You can uh, look on Facebook for the event, uh, annual chili fundraiser, or you can go to our website and find it. Uh, once you find it there, uh, and our website is www.umc.org. Our uh, Facebook page is Hope Community United Methodist Church. And once you find it there, you can register. And you can not only uh, make arrangements to pre-order your own dinner, but if you have friends or others, you can do that. And just when you get down to the park for payment, you can either pay then or you can set it up to pay uh, when you pick it up. <clears throat> we do need to have all the orders in by February the 10th so that we'll know how much to prepare. Well, today the, the scripture comes from the Gospel of Mark. Uh, I've told you this many times, some of you, and some of you this may be your first time to see us, but uh, Mark is my favorite of the Gospels for a number of reasons. One is it's the shortest. Two, it's uh, probably the most, uh, it's written the closest to the actual life of Jesus. And so people that were uh, reading and writing the Gospel of Mark probably remembered, uh, actually had personal experiences with Jesus. So in, in chapter 2, uh, starting with the 18th verse, it says this, Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak, otherwise the patch pulls away from it, the new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost, and so are the skins. But one puts new wine into new wineskins. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. <clears throat> we might ask that question often, why do your followers not? Why do your followers not do what you do, not do what you say? You know, the story goes that uh, the Methodist pastor was assigned to his new church, and uh, he preached a great fiery sermon the first time there. And people were happy. They had gotten a new preacher that could preach good. And so the next week, they uh, were able to hear exactly the same sermon again. and. The third week, the same thing, and finally the leaders of the church got together with him and said, what's the deal, dude? Uh, do you not know another sermon? He said, that's a really good sermon, but now we've heard it three times. And his comment was, well, when you start living the first one, I'll give you the second one. You know, there is a, 
uh, response we have. We want everyone to do as we do, as we think. And so many times now what I keep hearing over and over is I can't wait for things to be back like they were. And if, if they aren't back like they were, if they don't do what we want, if the, if the changes don't do exactly the way we expect, then we tend to, to villainize or push away anything that's not like we want it to be. But you know, the reality is things can't stay the same. I remember one time I was uh, doing a children's message and I held up my own high school picture and I asked them if they could identify who that was in the room and nobody could. And I, I venture to say that for most of us that would be true. I was standing right in front of them and they couldn't pick me out. What would life really be like if we were all alike, we all agreed, we never challenged or thought anything outside the box? My guess is it would be boring. Jesus here tells us to pay attention. To wake up. He didn't come to change to, to make things he came to make things new, I'm sorry. He didn't come to patch up or turn things back to the way they were. You know, that really never works. You can't really ever go home. This COVID pause that we've all been in is preparing us for something new. Are we really open to something new and discovery, living into new skins? Are we willing to let God show us where our growth needs to happen and where our outdated thoughts and biases and judgments, fears or hurts are causing us to say, why aren't you more like me? I think that's probably one of the, the biggest gifts we have from this is a chance to realize that things can be new and they can be good, although they may not be the same. In fact, I venture to say that's always been true. Things aren't the same as they were before the internet. And it's been a struggle for a lot of people to this notion that a smartphone is necessary, essential, important. But we live in this connected world and so people are experiencing it even right now with the, the COVID vaccines. It's being handled on the internet. You have to apply and then you have to receive a text message and then you have to respond to the text message and those things are complicated I guess for some but uh, that is the new way. I know it's hard to move into that new thing from the past. I know it's hard to let go of the way things were. As a person, a recovering alcoholic, I learned a long time ago that I have to do things different. The things I did then, even though I survived them and evidently they worked, they may not have worked well. What can we do now to realize that you just can't sew up the old stuff and put it back together. It'll tear again. You can't, you can't patch a tire too many times or it just won't hold air. You have to finally get something new. And so now we have the opportunity to get something new. New life in Jesus Christ with eyes wide open to see the ways in which God is working in the world through us through others, most of all through Jesus Christ. I wish that it was easier. I wish that change, even though it is normal, were more acceptable. And I wish that people of faith could realize that the story, the old, old story, the gospel story hasn't changed. But the way we tell the story, the way, the way we live out the story, we have a lot of new opportunities. This argument about fasting is much the same as the argument about singing old hymns or dressing with a suit and tie or a dress and hat to attend church. Paul addressed those things even in those days. 
Peter found out that when they did ministry to the Gentiles, they couldn't have some of the same expectations. And I just think today it's not really so much that the world is forcing us to change, but our expectations do need to change. We need to expect that things are going to be new, and we need to learn new ways. You know, I hope that uh, even with us at the church doing our chili dinner, we have to do it a new way. And you know what we may find is that some of the new needs to stay even when things are back to what we would so-call normal. Friends, I pray that you will hear these words from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and not try to patch up old wineskins, put new wine in them. They just won't hold. Life requires us to put new wine in new wineskins so that we can stretch and we can grow and we can become whole with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Friends, let us pray. Oh God, our hope from ages past and our hope for years to come. Get us through this day. Help us to be new wine for new wineskins. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Our Lord and Savior gives us hope. Amen.